this is my talk. Uh, I want you to understand I have to start with this slide because I'm going to say things that might sound a little, you know, bad, mean, spiteful, mean, hateful, you know, all those other adjectives. Uh, I'm adorable, okay? <laughs> I'm a wonderful, fluffy person and stuff, you know, who does not like doing bad things unless people pay me. I would never try to kill you unless you pay me to try it, okay? I promise. Uh, so, uh, so when I tell you those really harmful, terrible things that I'm going to be talking about, let's just remember the kittens, okay? Title of my talk, Steal Everything, Kill Everyone, Calls Total Financial Ruin, or How I Walked In and Misbehaved. Quite simply, it's because of the security fails. It's like I'm going to explain to you that the physical security and stuff, you know, is one of our biggest weaknesses uh, because people can understand two-dimensional versus three-dimensional when they're walking up through the front door. Um, Jason E. Street, I have lots of letters behind my name, I promise. Let's start off with who I am. I've got a day job and a night job. My day job is I'm the AVP of Information Security at a financial institution. My boss is going to love this on Monday. Um, what I do is I work in a cubicle with a lot of cool action figures around it. I monitor firewalls. I watch IDS systems. I build out our infrastructure. I find more creative ways to secure it and to go after people who are coming after us. And I do all the day-to-day -day blue team stuff. I'm, my main job is blue team, is defense, okay? On the, uh, my night job is the CIO, CIO of Strategy One Solutions, where I do uh, pen testing maybe like three times a year and stuff. You know, it's like basically I do uh, speaking engagements like this around the world. It's like I've written a book, uh, Dissecting the Hack, and I also uh, uh, do some other writing. And that's what I do uh, at night. So I respond to incidents during the day. I create incidents for other people at night. So best of both worlds. Uh, I love these pictures because you see the first picture with the baseball cap. That was me standing outside for an hour in front of an uh, industrial park uh, building, secured facility, on a Sunday with no traffic, and the security walked by twice and did not think to stop me and ask me, what the f are you doing on the sidewalk just watching our building? Uh, and he didn't put it in his report either, so bad on him. Uh, the second picture, you know, looking dapper in the glasses, is actually me going to apply for a job. Yes, I'm wearing a black hat collared shirt because I like to come with warning labels. And, um, and I did not get the job, unfortunately. I was way under, uh, uh, over underqualified for that one. Uh, I did get their data, so, you know, win-win. Um, these are my two favorite pictures uh, of engagements I've been on. The, uh, the one I'm wearing, the uh, I'm a liability shirt, I think is the best one because I stole a car in that shirt. Uh, I was at a hotel uh, off the coast and uh, the valet gave me the car and I had explained to him, I was like, I can't get in this car right now. And he's like, why? I says, well, because I'm stealing it. It's like uh, they paid me to do an assessment. I'm a liability. And yeah, it took him a while to figure that out. And so you know, finally I had to say, you might want to take this back. I think the owner's going to want it. Um, the second, uh, the, the next one is my favorite. One of the most secured facilities I've ever seen in my life, right across the street from ground zero. SWAT teams, you know, with canine units with their machine guns walking through the concourse, eight security guards in the main elevator lobby and stuff, not including the business lobby. That's me in the upper floors wearing an actual valid badge and a shirt that says, your company's computer guy. <laughs> I like that. I like that picture a lot. And we'll, we'll get more to that story in a little bit. So uh, I do have a CISSP. I think the Code of Ethics say that I have to put a Sun Tzu quote in my talks. There it is. Uh, we're in the intro, halfway through, so far so good. Uh, we're going to talk about the one fact uh, that we have to face uh, when we're dealing with this subject. We're going to talk about the two rules that I go by when I'm doing an engagement and then the three outcomes from those two rules and hopefully a good conclusion discussion. Let's face it, you're going to the award ceremony right after this, but still, we can, we can hope. Why this talk? I gave a talk last year uh, on the 36 strategy. It was talking about the beginning of social engineering. It was talking about things that you could do to try to get into the buildings. Uh, that was the part one. And quite frankly, I got some feedback afterwards going, it's like, man, Jason, that's some basic concept stuff. You know, it's like you weren't showing any kind of NLP or, you know, because I can't. I am not a professional uh, social engineering expert. I don't know about NLP. I don't know the psychology, facial recognition, mind ninja techniques. I still get in. I have a 100% success rate of getting in to facilities when I'm doing a social engineering engagement. So it's not that I'm that great, trust me, anybody will tell you that, it's our security is that weak. 
So these are educational and hopefully in a funny way kind of talk just to give you an onset of where to go look for more stuff and then hopefully have a good chuckle while you're doing it, okay? You're not gonna learn anything new, but hopefully you'll remember something that will make you go look at something else and, and, and you'll be better for it. So this is part two, because now I'm not talking about the social engineering part so much as this is all the damage I'm going to do after your security guy let me through the front door. Because number one fact, I'm getting in, okay? This is the, I took this picture I kid you not, I'm going to meet the guy for the first part of our uh, meeting, and as soon as I opened up, the, I got into the concourse, and I saw the, uh, the door, the employee door for the secured area, I was like, oh, you gotta be joking me. I walked right over, pushed 135, guess what, I got in. You just, I would have tried 531 or 315, you know, I would have tried, but look, see how they're rubbed off? It's like, I mean, it's like, in the, it just didn't look at the guy's face when I showed up 10 minutes before our meeting, and no one knew I was there. So, that was fun. Uh, here's another one. I went to go to uh, apply for another job, and when I'm on these engagements, uh, I like to be bad. So when I signed in to the receptionist, I stole the pin. So I'm a bad guy, was what we do. So um, as I go, as soon as I finish uh, getting the pin and signing in, I ask to go where the bathroom is. It's not because I drink so much freaking Diet Pepsi. Uh, it's just because I get lost very easily, and I will wander buildings looking for that darn bathroom for hours. Uh, you, you can't believe where, where the things I can get into. Well, I'm going through and I actually happened to stumble into the secured area part of the employee area uh, while I was looking for the bathroom and I found the employee entrance. And this is like the, the, the security guy at this facility actually bragged about their million dollar security system. And I looked at the door and I saw this little rod thing and stuff, you know, that was the, what was latching the door with. And I was like, only if I had a condom or something, you know, to protect that little rod and keep the door, from, uh, keep the door closing and then making it latch. And then I remembered, oh wait, I got a pin. So I took the pin that I stole, put the cap on the rod, the door shut perfectly, and it didn't latch. <laughs> so I leave, it's like I come back in about 20 minutes or so, it's still there, I'm now in the secured facility and no one knows. So that was fun. I am not a, uh, oh actually we're right here, okay. So I'm not a uh, master locksmith. I tell people I don't have to be a master locksmith, okay, if your people will let me through the front door. Okay, I don't have to be a massive ninja coder, which I'm not. It's like if I can just steal the hard drive with all your data. Here's some of my master lock picking skills in action. I'm, I'm terrible with the lock picks, but I'm awesome with cardboard. Door and back to being open now. Down from an dumpster. So. So uh, here's another key. I love forging emails and putting them on iPad. The key is to put them on iPad. If you forge an email and print it out, they're going to look at you fake. Oh, this is, you, just, you just typed this up. You put it on an iPad, the blue hyperlinks stay up, uh, hyperlinked. And also, it's like it's on an iPad. It's magical. You must be telling the truth. It's like, so it's like, so they're going to go and say, you know, it's like, okay, it's like, so I was up in that secured facility in New York. The network guy noticed an unusual amount of traffic coming from the CFO's assistant's computer and it's uh, going to their uh, main server and was wondering what was going on. It was me. And so he comes over and he asks, it's like, what's going on? What are you doing? And I start telling him exactly why I'm there. I spent two hours on Google creating this email, making it sound like the owner, the new owner of this company was upset and sent an email to the other uh, company that he owns to send one of his guys out and uh, to go and look at the network, and I made it sound very political, I made it sound like there was urgency, and that they, it was supposed to be a surprise, so no one was, knew I was supposed to be there. So I showed this to the, uh, the networking guy, well, he sent me to his office, we went to his office, and we talked to uh, the CIO for about 10 minutes, and the employee then started to escort me around to all the other computer desks and stuff, you know, so I could plug in my malware, and I had an employee escort, so I had to be okay. So it's like I actually can finish the rest of the engagement and stuff, you know, having someone help me and make sure that the people knew I was okay to be there and plugging in my USB devices and doing whatever else I needed to do. So I really love that email. I've got two rules, but guess what? Looking for PCI is not one of them. I don't care about your uh, HIPAA or HIPPO. I don't care about your Sarbanes-Oxley. I don't care about your ISOs unless they've got Linux on them. Uh, I, I don't really care. I just want to F you up. 
I just want to mess you up in the worst possible way. I want to be the worst thing to ever happen to you at the worst possible time. Okay? I don't remember the kittens. Uh, so this is where I got my, uh, my two rules. I got them from Serenity, which was based off the series uh, uh, Firefly, which Fox canceled, many die in a fire. Uh, and this, the two quotes are very simple. I aim to misbehave and let's go be bad guys. That's it. I'm just trying to do bad. Uh, to team it up, it's like, you know, red team. It's like, uh, don't act surprised when we try to kick you below the belt. It's like, uh, bank managers are still being kidnapped today, taken to their home, their family held hostage overnight until they go open up the bank for bank robbers. That's not funny. That's real. This stuff still happens. Another thing is, this is one of these things that we, people talk about. This is not a new concept, what we're doing. This is from 1992, uh, the movie Sneakers. It's like, uh, so people hire you to break into their places to make sure no one can break into their places. It's a living. Well, this one's old now because it's not a very good one. It's gotten pretty good now. Business is pretty good with this. But this is a concept that's not new. It's something that we still have to keep revisiting and stuff. You know, better people than me talk about it a little bit more technically and stuff. You know, like I said, I'm, I'm the comedy relief on this. But uh, let's keep going. So another thing we have to understand is management is not proactive they are reactive so uh, Dan Irwin said in 2008 the best way to get management excited about a disaster plan is to burn down the building across the street <laughs> hello everyone I'd like to introduce myself I'm the fire <laughs> so what we're gonna get to now is we're gonna get to the fun part and the fun part is talking about all the different ways we can start those fires okay I love this one. This is, this is what I call the trifecta of bad because, uh, yes, I've stole the phone or cloned it. Yes, I've got the uh, laptop, 30 laptops unsecured in this facility. They had no laptop lock cables because they were secure. By the time I did the exit interview, I started seeing laptop lock cables, which was good for them. Uh, also the badge because, you know, my arms may get tired and I might need to take, make trips. So it's like, uh, so they had me an employee badge. I appreciated that. Okay, I, I, am, I do feel bad about this one. Um, because I am a CISSP, I have a code of ethics, so please, no one report me. Let's make this off the record. I'm sure no one's watching. Um, um, not about the laptop, because I have no problem stealing the laptop. I mean, the guy left the cable on it for him. He was just giving it to me. And I'm not talking about the screwdriver, because I needed to steal something maybe, you know, that was bolted down, because, you know, I like to be thorough. Um, I was a little hungry, and I stole one of the cookies. I'm sorry. Okay, let's go on. Um, I love this because, you know, people expect security not to be that thorough. So they get their laptop lock cable, they're told to fasten it to the desk, but that's hard. You have to bend down. So uh, let's just lip that cable over the, the desk and no one's going to pull it. And you know what? Most security doesn't uh, pull the cable to see if it's actually secured. But I'm not security. I'm a thief. I'm going to pull the cable. I'm going to try to steal it. Also, kudos for this guy because he had it for, uh, firmly attached to the, uh, the desk. He had, it, uh, he had it locked to his laptop. But I'm telling you, when it's the code 0000, I'm going to try that one. I'm going to try 111. I'm going to try 999. I'm gonna, if you're a geek, I'm going to try 0007. So sorry about that one. Um, also, they like to move the one, like the last number or the, the top number. They'll move one in either direction, and that's it. So that way they can just go, tick, I'm unlocked. I think I'm locked. I'm going to try those. Also, when I'm in engagements, I'm going through all your drawers. Wait, hold on. That didn't sound right. Uh, I'm going to go through all your desks and your cabinets, okay? And I'm going to be looking for stuff because nice, honest co-workers are not going to go looking through your desk. I'm not a nice, honest uh, co-worker. Uh, this guy had his laptop locked, totally correct. Everything was right. And then he put the keys in his top drawer. So now that not only I steal his laptop, but now I have a nice, really shiny laptop cable and stuff, you know, I can protect from someone stealing it because I hate it when they steal my stuff that I stole. Uh, the only reason why this picture was in here is because I stole the iPod because that's like totally freaking retro. How awesome was that? Uh, this is another trifecta. It's like I stole the purse, I stole the car keys, and yes, I stole the phone. Um, let the record state, I did not steal the lunch. Okay? I felt really proud about that. But, but now let's, hold on, let's, let's cut it for a second. I took the car keys, took the driver's license out of her purse. I then go to the parking lot. I find out what car it is. 
I unlock the car, I go back and put her car keys back. She comes back after work, I'm in the back seat with a gun, telling her that I've got a driver's license, showing her that I know where she lives, that I've got people there that will kill her family if she does not go back into that facility, steal all their data that, that, that I need, and then come right back out, and that we're tracing and we've got her phone cloned and we can monitor it. Employees need to know that their personal belongings are theirs, but the impact can be severe for them as well as the company. That's why they need to secure their stuff. Now let's remember the kittens real quick. Okay. <laughs> when you have this many frowny faces on a slide, you're just effed, okay? It's just game over. You literally gave me a blank check to steal your, your credit and your identity, and trust me, my credit sucks, so I'm taking it, you know? Uh, thanks for leaving the social security card there because it's got your signature on it, so I know exactly how to forge it. It's like, that was very helpful. Not many people are that kind, so. Uh, oh, I, when I stole the first car, the guy sort of cheated and let some people know that I was going around and doing stuff like that. So I said, well, screw you. Uh, two o'clock in the morning, I walked in, grabbed three Mercedes Benz and a uh, Beamer, and just took them with me. Less than 66 seconds, so Nicolas Cage beats that. Uh, the look on the guy's face, when, uh, the manager's security face, when I walked to him and I dropped him those four keys was priceless. I wish I could have included the picture, but it's on my desktop at my home, so. So some countermeasures. Employees need to know that this stuff matters for them as well. Make sure they're locking their desk, securing their property. They secure their property at home. They secure their property at their, in their car. They need to secure their property at work. Uh, also, no, uh, no tailgating. You've got to make sure that they understand that they, they shouldn't tailgate. It's like they shouldn't, because you know what I'm doing? I'm coming in a wheelchair. And I've got like four books. And it's like, oh, man, Jason, you're a douchebag. And I'm like, yes, I'm a bad guy. I'm trying to steal from you. Do you really think I care that you're going to feel lesser about me because I'm not supposed to be in a wheelchair? No, I'm evil. It's like, so what I'm going to do is like, and trust me, when I go up to that door and I got these books, you're really going to be the asshole who's not going to let me in the door? I mean, seriously. No, you're going to let me in. And I thank you for that. Uh, your employee's not going to, your employer's not going to, but I will. Also, if you see, some, uh, see something, say something. You don't have to personally tackle the guy if you think he's suspicious, okay? You do have to call security. You need to start empowering the employees to understand they are part of your security team and they need to start acting like it. So, yeah, here's the real warm and fuzzy side. We're actually going to talk about how, you know, to kill everyone because that always brings up a crowd on a Sunday night. Um, this was uh, taking pictures at 2.30 in the morning. I'm in a hotel somewhere, a uh, different hotel than the car, and I'm inside a mechanical room. I'm wearing Pepsi pajama bottoms uh, over some cargo pants with some really bad things and a white t-shirt, and I'm barefoot because I took all my clothes off in the bathroom in the guest area of the hotel and changed into that and then started walking around to see what I could do. I could do a lot because you notice one important fact in this picture, there are no padlocks on any of the switches. I will tell you this right now, I've got some OCD like you wouldn't believe, okay? If that switch is on, I'm turning it off. If that switch is off, I'm turning it on, and if, by golly, if there's a red button, I'm pushing it twice, <laughs> okay? That's just how I roll, okay? Now, I want you to understand, I'm not a total jerk, okay? It's like, because yes, I'm going to start a fire in this room, and yes, it's gonna have some poisonous chemicals in it, so the smoke will go through the uh, ventilation system that's right there, but I'm not totally terrible, because, I mean, it's 2.30 in the morning. Who wants to get woken up at 2.30 in the morning listening to this bing, ranging alarm sound going off? So I'll silence the alarm system for you, because it's like, I mean, I don't wanna be rude. The only thing worse than having that alarm going off in your ears and stuff, you know, is someone throwing cold water on your face when you're trying to sleep. I'll turn the sprinkler off system off for you too, okay? It's like, I, I don't want anybody to get all, uh, you know, wet and drenched and stuff, you know, there's a fire going on, that'd be dangerous. Um, oh wait, hold on, yeah, maybe not, okay. So um, another place that I like to, I think it's great to kill people is the kitchen. It's like, uh, this guy didn't even ask who I was there, but you know, most people don't. So just to bring that home, here's a nice little video. Uh, is there any law enforcement from Malaysia in here? Okay, this was, okay, good. This was a video that I took uh, in, Malaysia, in a Malaysian hotel. Um, I was wearing this shirt and I'm in Malaysia. I don't blend well. So let's see what happens. Here we go.
I didn't edit this video because I don't want you to think, you know, shenanigans is like you made it yourself look cooler or something like that. But no, so you'll get to see me uh, doing exactly everything that I did, including right here where I should have turned the other way, but I turned this way, but I didn't know what the building was like. So let's walk down this corridor first. Yay. I'm walking as fast as I can. I'm walking pretty fast. It's just a long corridor, we'll say. And if I wanted to steal some tables, there I go. I was like, wow, that was a letdown. I'm sure I'm impressing people that are in the audience right now. So I decided to keep going. I'm a hacker. We don't give up the first try, right? So now, if you get motion sickness or seasickness, take Dramamine or look away for a second, okay? Because this gets me. I wasn't joking. <laughs> So I come up against this uh, door here, and I'm thinking, oops, there we go. So I come up against this door, and I'm thinking, oh, this is awesome. The reason is because it's secured, and uh, it's got stuff in there that you want protected, so you put a padlock on it, but then you don't padlock it. <laughs> so one, thank you for that. What could you be protecting? I don't know. Let's see here. Oh. I did not go in there with an Uzi or an AK-47. I did not bring C4 with me. I just walked out of that closet with napalm. I just walked out with poison. So let's see what I can do. <laughs> well, first I gotta find a place to do that. That's gonna be a long search, you know, looking for the proper place to deploy this kind of stuff. Let me turn around and, oh, I'm in the kitchen. That was quick. So let's walk through here. Everybody say hello to this guy. He didn't say hello to me, the jerk. Uh, I'm, um, if it was a little bit later at night, I'd be you know, tampering with right there is the uh, refrigerators for the food supply. I would destroy your food supply. Even if you detected that it was poison, it would be useless. You would have to destroy all of it. That's some, that's some coinage right there. Here, I'm going into another room. I could have gone to some of these other doors. I wasn't really trying, especially since I didn't have permission. I mean, I'm in, since they didn't know at first, it's like they said it was okay first, afterwards. Uh, here's the mechanical areas. This is where I start my mechanical fires using the napalm. You notice those two guys there, so I have to use social engineering countermeasures. Let's listen. My countermeasures. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> it was going okay, and then I kept moving. So here we go through the rest of it. That's just me showing you more places that I would you know, spread the napalm. I like saying napalm because it sounds cool. Uh, one of the other things, you notice that they protect guest information really well. You know, in the computer systems, you know, you can't go to the front desk and ask where someone's staying. But obviously you can walk into the kitchen because every person, their room, number and their name is right there for room service so that's pretty low tech now i'm going through this and i'm thinking to yourself it's like you're saying well jason all you're doing is walking around a freaking place what's that well basically first of all dude i told you i was showing you the physical stuff not social engineering but since you asked let's go try to do some social engineering because let's see what happens if someone notices me so i'm going to go talk to the head chef and the manager of the hotel all right are you using wi-fi or so I asked him if he's using Wi-Fi or cable. I got an iPad and I've got my hacker shirt. I was like, do you want using Wi-Fi? I'm questioning him and stuff, you know. And uh, he's saying, you know, okay. he's you using cable. Okay. I'm just trying to check this in my phone. That's just corrupted okay. father. I love the way they smiled. And, like the guy in the back window was just like, you know, photobombing me and stuff, you know, like, what the, what's going on with that guy? It's like, uh, and then I just left. That was it. So that's how easy it can be. And it's like, and we talk about social engineering, it's just easy as just saying, how's it going and stuff, you know, and talking to someone. People don't expect bad things to happen until they happen. So some of the countermeasures. One of the key ones that I could not stress enough is create a code word. Make sure people understand that, first of all, make your employees understand that this stuff happens. Workplace violence happens. I mean, for gosh sakes, I got this information off of workplaceviolencenews.com. It happens so often they've got a website for it, for gosh sakes. That's depressing. Okay, so you gotta understand that that happens. So set up a code. Um, I, I tell people, like, especially with receptionists, code, oh my God, he's got a gun, run, panic, we're all gonna die, is not the best code. 
Okay, it is effective. It does, you know, raise a thing, but it may not be the best. Uh, I always tell them to suggest something like a code periwinkle, uh, Mr. Periwinkle to HR, Mr. Periwinkle to HR. And I'm hoping that someday someone institutes an actual code periwinkle because I think that's just funny saying periwinkle. Um, another one is conduct uh, routine safety checks, not just safety checks of your equipment, but of your people as well. I, when I walked around for an hour, I noticed one thing at that facility. There was this one door that I could easily jimmy and it had a camera that was right over it, but I couldn't tell by the angle because where the other two cameras were spaced, if I walked diagonally from the other parking area, it wouldn't see me except for that one camera. And if that camera was angled at the right way, I could totally bypass it. So I talked to the former head of security there and I told him, it's like, dude, it's like, this is where I can get in. He's like, whatever. It's like, come with me. He takes me into this office, uh, the security office. It was empty. Showed me the computer screens, uh, the, the TV monitor screens, they were all turned off. He turns them on. The one camera that was not working was that one. I looked him dead in the eye and I said, in all seriousness, like, oh, I guess I wasn't the only one that had that idea. You may want to check your inventory. Uh, I did mention he was the former head of security at that facility. Okay, good. Okay. So let's talk about, you know, financial ruin. Let's talk about uh, espionage. And, and I hate to break some people's uh, feelings and stuff, or hurt some people's feelings, and, and just say it's not just the Chinese, okay? 70s, the 80s, 90s, it's like the French were doing awesome with it. So sorry to, you know, to insult. Uh, actually, I'm complimenting my French friends because they did a great counter uh, espionage thing with the CIA and stuff back in the 90s with the Boeing incident. You can Google that one. Uh, CIA wish you wouldn't. Uh, so uh, that was fun. So let's talk about some of the things you can do there. Once again, this many frowny faces. Not good. Because you know what? I'm an environmentalist. I am. Do you know how many poor, senseless trees die every day due to those printouts that you leave beside the printer? <laughs> well, you know what? They will not die in vain when I visit. I'm taking all of them. I'm going to liberate those trees. I'm going to liberate all. And you know what? I'm such an environmentalist. I will take the ones that are still printing out just to make sure you don't forget them. Those trees will not die in vain when I'm there. It's like, uh, you know, another thing I like, and this is so sad. This is actually a Dilbert comic strip, is that they still use thread bins to put all your, you're telling me all your confidential data, all the stuff that needs to be shredded, let's put it in a big blue bucket. <laughs> this is all the confidential, and this is done in DC, and this is done in financial institutions. This is done in like con DOD contractor's offices. What my favorite is the DOD contractor's office the, the, it's a secured area. The office, the office, the actual offices of the executives, they're actually secured, locked, where security um, cleaning crew can't go in because of all the top secret data. So what do they do at night? They put the blue bucket outside their door. <laughs> yes, that's awesome. I mean, I mean, I'm sorry. It's awesome for the bad guys. Oh, dude. Yeah. When I get to the point where I get to stick malware in, into your uh, hard drive, uh, it's just going to be a fun night for me, not for you. That really, yeah, it's DEF CON. You just get with it. Um, one thing we're going off of your workstation is when you see that USB drive in your Exchange server, it's not going to end well for you, okay? I know where that USB drive's been. You don't want it in your Exchange server, okay? <laughs> And I mean, and you're thinking it's like, what kind of damage and stuff you can do going after our exchange server? Ask HP Gary. Um, but we can go and say, um, well, then how about your accounting server? <laughs> me and the 25 other employees that are also me, that are now getting paychecks from you, say, oh, it's, it's okay. It's not going to be too bad. Or I could just do a wire sniff. This was like from my part one talk, you know, just do a, a wire sniff on your traffic. Sniffing passwords are hard. You got to configure all the stuff in Linux. You got to get the wire. Like I said, I'm not that technical. I'm not that, you know, bright. It's like, uh, why don't I just get them off your monitor? <laughs> okay. I love this one. I actually tried bracket, leave blank, bracket first. <laughs> I gave them the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> okay. And yes, it was just hit enter. This is my favorite of all time. You know why? Because this was at a uh, pharmaceutical bio 
whatever research lab and stuff, you know, where I'm supposed to be dealing with rocket scientists, right? The password, first of all, they shouldn't have written it down at all, but the password was, that scratched out was actually an alphanumeric special character password. It was very complex, and it was hard. So they scratched it out and put it to welcome. <laughs> so, and, and it was all lowercase. I tried the capital first because, you know, they're rocket scientists. Um, the one thing worse than seeing me in Pepsi pajamas, you know, ask my curial, is uh, actually seeing me in this suit. Because if I'm in this suit, I am out to screw you over terribly, okay? Because I'm wearing my Vesta Doom. I call it the Vesta Doom because I think it sounds cool and I'm reliving my childhood. Uh, if you want to know more about the Vesta Doom and all these little toys, it's in my part one talk that I did last year. It's like, but, those, uh, but now I want you to know I've got a Vesta Doom 2.0. Let's, let's see some of those things, okay? I've got some video recorder USB pins right here. Not only am I keeping one in my pocket, I'm going to actually be going in and leaving them in your little cup holders that you leave so I can record you logging in your passwords, carrying on your conversations, things like that. So that's awesome. If I'm the tech guy, I got my nice little handy eight gig USB flashlight video recorder that I'm stealing your data off of. And as you remember the little bouncy Dramamine, that was because it was taken on my four gig audio video recorder uh, watch. When I walk into your facility, I'm a walking, talking Google streetcar, okay? I'm capturing everything I can. Um, now, I got another device since then too, the, to my 2.0 vest. This was uh, something that was given to me by a three letter agency in DC. I'm not, uh, the only reason why he gave me this, this device and stuff, you know, which cost billions of dollars of research, he said, was that I was to never talk about it in public. Um, so this device he gave me is actually a USB keystroke logger. It's undetected uh, by any antivirus. You can plug it in. It's very streamlined. It's undetectable stuff, you know. It's very hard to spot when you actually plug it into the device and it records all the keystrokes. You're right, I'm lying. I got it off of ThinkGeek. <laughs> ThinkGeek. I like to put this for, you know, for the QSAs and for your, for your executives, you know, that you want to talk about this slides to and stuff, you know, and, and tell, when you get back and tell them about these things. L let them put it in a different way that they understand a little bit better. The risk matrix. Available at a Geek and Gadget website? Well, we discovered that's a near certainty, okay? <laughs> Being able to log the CEO's keystrokes? Yeah, I'm going to go with catastrophic on that one. Now you see all these other devices, you see all these pins and you know, all these devices, those were acquired, it's like, you know, from a very, I mean, you have to be a select group of people, okay, to be able to get access to that kind of technology. I mean, I think everybody is familiar with that kind of, uh, that kind of access. I think everybody here has that access. Uh, it's called frequent flyers. I mean, you talk about hackers getting this kind of data. Okay, I'm an accountant. I really hate my boss, I really hate my job, I want to go somewhere, I want to steal a whole bunch of stuff from the company first. How can I do that? Oh, I'm on this flight, oh look, SkyMall, oh, I can put key log, stroke, uh, keystroke logging and spyware on his, uh, my boss's computer. Oh, I can, you know, have a USB recorder and stuff, you know, pin and take video of our company secrets. And yes, I can actually have a voice recorder so I can uh, record our top secret confidential conference meetings. This is not hard. That is one of the biggest things, you know, you hear, I, I see these talks and it's like these guys are like the rock stars and like they're super elite and stuff, you know, and they deserve all the credit and all this stuff. But I'm telling you, it's not just that. I'm the reverse of that. I'm the guy saying, it's so easy, even I can do it. Okay. It is like, it's just the general stuff. People are so busy protecting their stuff from these very high level attacks. They're forgetting, oh, SQLI, oops, sorry, Sony. You know, it's like, it's sometimes it's a low-hanging fruit. It really is the low-hanging fruit they're going to go after. So you've got to be protecting that as well. You've got to be protecting from these kind of threats as well. This is one, of, I love this one. I took these pictures. This is uh, the Pony Plug from uh, Pony Express. I took these pictures at a, a, a bank branch off on the, out on the West Coast. And uh, I did four branches, uh, four attempts, four successes. After the fourth one, they told me to stop. Uh, the reason why is because I walked in, I was wearing a blue DEFCON shirt, work shirt, 
I come with warning labels. And I told him, it's like, I'm here to check. We have been having brownouts at the corporate office, and we need to check to make sure that the power fluctuations aren't affecting uh, your operations here. So what I'm going to need to do is I need to plug this device into your uh, here, plug it into the network so it can take the readings and report back to the home office exactly what's going on. And by the way, I need to go in and check your... Um, uh, make sure all the uh, computers have proper power surges and uh, UPS units working. They, I used a face, uh, false name that I had no ID or identification for. I used a fake company and a fake phone number. I signed into their vendor log. If I would have come in there with a ski mask and a shotgun, every single person would have reacted exactly the right way. They've been trained to handle that. They were not able to, they did not expect the geek factor and they walked me through the teller area, the drive through area, and through the back rooms where the actual money is, not the shiny little vault thing, but the big safes with the actual money in it. What kind of damage could I have done? What I did do was I plugged in my pony device, this uh, one with the uh, power unit and stuff, you know, see the power uh, UPC on the right? I like that one the best because I had to get the bank manager to get out of her seat so I could uh, plug it into behind her desk. Um, <laughs> And what do I do right after that? It's like, I, can, I don't have to go to my car. I don't have to phone home. I go to the bank lobby, and I've got Backtrack 5 on a Zoom tablet, and it's like I've got it already connected to the Pony Express. I'm ponying you before I even get out your door, okay? So what are some of the counter, uh, countermeasures? There's only one major countermeasure, people, okay? And that, quite frankly, is just going to be stop printing, what happened to this paperless office, for gosh sakes? It's like, make sure you're doing proper DLP, making sure you're talking about, we've, there was a recent report about how uh, some of these data leakages are mostly coming from insider uh, um, and threats from the actual employees themselves. So make sure you're watching, you're doing dual diligence, making sure that not everything is being shared open. So, so now what can we do? Like I said, I'm the blue team. I like it when we win. I love I am, I kid you not, I am rooting so hard for the good guys when I go on an engagement, okay? I mean, I look at some of those employees sometimes, I'm like, you gotta be effing, you're believing what I just said? Seriously? And it's like, and then they let me in, and I'm like, oh my, dude, obviously I was a bad guy. It's like, so we need to, uh, what do we need to do though? We need to educate, empower, and enforce our workforce, our employees. And the best way to educate them is to stop this one simple phrase, stupid users. Stupid users clicked on an email. Stupid users went to a website they weren't supposed to go. You know what, if I'm in the security department, stupid me for not educating my employees properly on how to handle those kind of threats, okay? And another thing is, if I hire an employee and on the first day, they don't even have a driver's license, and on the first day of work, I tell them, here's the keys to my Bentley, go do some deliveries, and they, break, and they crash that car? Who's the idiot? The one that started driving and the one that gave them the keys? We're giving them technology they don't know how to use. They need to start being educated properly on how to use it. Then when they screw up, we can say it. But not until then. We need to educate our employees and let them understand what they're going to do. We also need to empower our employees. And by empowering them, I don't mean starting a union, okay? So don't get all upset with me, you know, management types, okay? We need to let them know one simple fact. They are part of the security team. From the CEO to the mailroom, you are part of the security team. It is part of your job and your duties to make sure you're protecting the company data. And they need to know that, and they need to enjoy that. They need to understand you, as information security, has, the, has access to the biggest intrusion detection system known to man. All those employees are on the front line, they're saying, oh, that looked weird, that shouldn't have happened, let me call somebody. That's what you need to start doing. You need to start empowering them, you need to start letting them know that it's required. I've got a guy who sends me 15 freaking emails, okay, a week on a phishing scam or some kind of other thing that he thought was weird and he wanted to, he wanted to make sure I knew about it. You know what I say every single time? Awesome, thank you very much, I appreciate it. Because that 16th one is not going to be a false positive. It's going to be something we need to respond to. I'd rather get a thousand false positives from people that are actually thinking about it. Because if they're sending it to me, that means they're thinking about security. We do walkthroughs in our facility during our day job. And we look under keyboards for passwords. I mean, at first, we actually started finding them. Okay, that was bad. It's like, but then we started not finding them. But we still do it. You know why? 
because every time you do that, everybody in that area is going, oh, they're checking for something. We got to make sure creating that security awareness without shoving it down their throat. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. And then you enforce it. Okay. Not with a baseball bat. But, oh gosh, that would be fun. Uh, but no, it's like not with a baseball bat, but with positive enforcement. When someone stops me, when I don't have a visible badge and says, what are you doing? What are you doing there? I report them to their supervisor. And I say, awesome job. That person did what they were supposed to do. That person is protecting our data. We've got it where we put a list and stuff, you know, in our, in our bulletins and stuff, you know, our employee bulletins saying people that got kudos for security. They did the right thing. They did it the right way. And you know what that breeds? Competition. Because that freaking Susie in accounting, she's always getting the credit for doing that stuff. Well, I can do it too. You know, I can stop someone if I don't think they have a proper badge. That's how you enforce it. It doesn't have to be negative. You've got a workforce, you've got a human IDS system out there just waiting to be used, start using them. Okay, so as, when as, you, as soon as you stop saying stupid user and start saying my coworkers in the information security department, we're gonna start winning. So here's some links. And there you go.